In today's lecture, we are going to speak about the loan words as a reflection and result of language and culture contact. This topic consists of the following issues. First, reasons for cultural borrowings in English. Second, classification of borrowings according to the borrowed aspect. Third, classification of borrowings according to the degree of assimilation. And fourth, borrowings in, in, in British and American. First of all, what are the reasons for borrowings in English? Where two different languages have contact over a period of time, they will surely influence each other. Words might be taken from one language and adopted to another. This process is known as borrowing. Cultural borrowing is taking ideas, customs and social behaviors from another culture or civilization. While taking ideas, customs and social behavior, we enrich our language with new words from other cultures. Thus, a cultural borrowing is a loan word adopted to express a concept that is new to recipient language speaker's culture. As stated by Carol Mayer's Cotton, cultural borrowings are loan words that fill gap, gaps in the recipient language's store of words because they stand for objects or concepts new to the new language culture. When there is cultural borrowing, there is always the likelihood that the associated words may be borrowed too. As an example, when Christianity was in introduced into English, a number of associated words such as bishop and angel found their way into English. This process has continued uninterrupted, uninterruptedly down to the present day, each cultural wave bringing to the language a new deposit of loan words. Borrowed elements that fill a gap, a lexical gap in the recipient language are called cultural borrowings. They are often introduced along with a new thing or uh, a new concept, such as the Japanese word sushi, the Chinese concept paper tiger, and the Swahili word safari in many Western languages. Language borrowing is normally encouraged by external factors such as geographical neighborhood, political, social, economic, and cultural exchange, military, and other activities between different countries. Language borrowing can be considered as a reflection and result of languages and cultural contacts. At present, there are about 6,000 different languages on our planet, and every one of them has a vocabulary containing many thousands of words. Whenever and wherever there are contacts of any sort between the speakers of different languages, speakers will make use of loans loan words from other languages to refer to things, processes, and the way, ways of behavior, organizations, or thinking for which words or phrases were not available or convenient in their own language, in their own languages. The most boring and, and are the most profound reasons for borrowings from foreign languages is the introduction of new concepts for which there are no suitable words. If to speak about the borrowings in the English language. Borrowings are the words characteristic of English throughout its history. More than two-thirds of the English words are borrowed. Large scale of language borrowings took place between languages both historically and currently. It is part of the cultural history of English speakers when they have always adopted loan words from the languages of contacted cultures. English is very rich in different types of contacts with other countries, so English is very rich in borrowings. Here, the Roman invasion, the adoption of Christianity, Scandinavian and Norman conquests of the British Isles, the development of British colonialism and trade and cultural relationships served to increase immensely in the English vocabulary. Therefore, it is of great value to study borrowings in English and try to find the basic principle underlying the phenomenon. So, to understand it better, let's consider some classic, uh, some classic classification of borrowings. In the classification 
of borrowings. We should give um, the importance to the classification of borrowings according to the borrowed aspect. In English, we subdivide them into the four, into the following four types: phonetic borrowings, translation loans, semantic borrowings, and morphemic borrowings. First of all, phonetic borrowings are most characteristic in all languages. They are called loan words. They are the words which are borrowed with their spelling, pronunciation, and meaning. Uh, then they undergo assimilation. Each sound in the borrowed word is substituted by the corresponding sound of the borrowing, borrowing language. In some cases, the spelling might be changed. The structure of the word can also be changed. For example, there are the words as labor, table, travel, chair, people are phonetic borrowings from the French language. Um, and from the Russian language, such words as uh, manufactura, sputnik are phonetic for borrowings from Russian. Bank, soprano, duet are phonetic borrowings from Italian. Translation loans are word-for-word -word translations of some foreign words or expressions, such as the notion is borrowed from a foreign language, but it is expressed by native lexical units. For example, from Latin, to take the bull by the horns, German, living space, and etc. Some loan translations appeared in English from Latin already in the Old English period. Sunday, from Salis Deus, there are translation loans from the languages of Indian, pipe of peace, place faced, and etc. Semantic borrowings are such words when a new meaning of the unit existing in the language is borrowed. Here, the meanings to leave for the word to dwell, which is in the Old English had the meaning to wonder, or else the meaning dar, padarak, for the word gift, which is Old English had the meaning vykup, zaženu. Morphemic borrowings are the words of, uh, with the affixes, which occur in the language, when many words with the identical affixes borrowed from one language into another, so that the morphemic structure of the borrowed words becomes familiar to the English-speaking, the borrowed language. We can find many rom romantic affixes in the English word-building system, that is why there are many hybrids in English where different morphemes have different origin, for example, goddess and beautiful. Classification of borrowings according to the degree of assimilation. There we distinguish three groups, completely assimilated borrowings, partly assimilated borrowings, and non-assimilated borrowings. To the group of completely assimilated borrowings belong the words not felt as foreign words in the language, as the French word sport and the native word start. Completely assimilated verbs belong to the regular verbs, for example, correct, corrected. Completely assimilated nouns from their plural by means of s inflection, like gate, gates. Semantic assimilation of borrowed words depends on the word existing in the borrowing language. As a result, as a rule, a borrowed word does not bring all the meanings into the borrowing language. It is, uh, if it is polysemantic, the Russian borrowing Sputnik is used in English only in one of its meanings. Partly assimilated borrowings are subdivided into the following groups. Borrowings non assimilated semantically, borrowings non assimilated grammatically, borrowings non assimilated phonetically. Non assimilated uh, semantically because they denote objects and notions peculiar to the country from the language of which they were borrowed. For example, safari, sombrero, tiger, kvas. Borrowings uh, not assimilated grammatically. Here, Latin and Greek retain their plural forms. F uh, examples. Uh, Bacillus, bacilli, phenomenon, phenomena, datum, data, and genius, genie. Non-assimilated phonetically borrowings. 
Here belong the words with initial sounds V and Z. For example, voice zero. The native words, uh, these words, voiced consonants are used only in the intervocalic position as allophones of sounds F and Z. Loss, lose, life, leave. And some Scandinavian borrowings with S, K in the words sky, skate, ski. In the g, k and g sounds before front vowels are not palatalized, like girl, get, give, kid, kill, kettle, and others. Non assimilated words, mainly called barbarisms, are the borrowings which are used by Englishmen rather seldom and are not assimilated. Here belong the words from Italian language, adieu. From French, tete a tete, Italian, dolce vita, Spanish, buen de, buen di, from Italian, gonzo. Among words of romantic origin borrowed from Latin during the period when the British Isles were a part of the Roman Empire, there are such words as street, port, wall, etc. Many Latin and Greek words came into English during the adaptation of Christianity in the 6th century. At this time, the Italian alphabet was borrowed from the runic alphabet. These borrowings are usually called classical borrowings. Here belong Latin words altar, cross, dean, and Greek words church, angel, devil, and anthem. Latin and Greek Borrowings appeared in English during the Middle English period due to the Great Revival of Learning. These are mostly scientific words uh, because Latin was the language of science at the time. These words were not used as frequently as words of the Old English period. There, some of them were partly assimilated grammatically. For example, formula, formulae. Here also belong such words as memorandum, minimum, maximum, and veto. Classical borrowings continue to appear in the Middle English as well, Modern English as well. Mostly, there are words formed with the help of Latin and Greek morphemes. The largest group of borrowings is French. Most of them came into English during the Norman conquest. French influenced not only the vocabulary of the English, but also its spelling and documents, were written in French as the local population was mainly illiterate and the ruling class was French. Runic letters remaining in English after the Latin alphabet were substituted by the Latin letters and combination of letters. For example, V was introduced for the voiced consonant V instead of its F in the intervocalic position. Lufian, love. The digraph CH was introduced to denote the sound CH instead of the letter C in the word like chest. Before front vowels uh, where it had been palatalized. There are the following semantic groups of French borrowings. Words relating to the government, words relating to the military affairs, to jewelry, fashion, jewelry, food and cooking. Words were borrowed from French into English after 1650, mainly through French literature, but they were not as numerous and many of them are not completely assimilated. Here we distinguish the semantic groups like words relating to literature and music, military affairs, buildings and furniture, food and cooking. Cultural and trade relations between Italy and England brought many Italian words into English. The earliest Italian borrowing came into English in the 14th century. It was the word bank from the Italian banco, meaning bench. Italian money lenders and money changers sat in the streets on benches. When they suffered losses, they turned over the benches. It was called banco rotto, which, uh, from which the English word bankrupt originated. In the 17th century, some geographical terms were borrowed. Volcano, uh, gran granite, bronze, lava. 
At the same time, some political terms were borrowed, manifesto, bulletin. Nevertheless, most, it, mostly Italian is famous for its influence in music and in all Indo-European languages, musical terms were borrowed from Latin, alto, basso, tenor and others. Among the 20th century Italian borrowings, we can distinguish gazette, inter, uh, incognito, uh, fiasco, fascist, and etc. Spanish borrowings were introduced into English mainly through its American variant. Here we have the following groups trade terms, cargo, embargo, names of dances and musical instruments, names of vegetables and fruit. By the end of the Old English period, English underwent a strong influence of Scandinavian to the Scandinavian conquest of the British Isles. Scandinavians belonged to the same group of people as Englishmen and their languages had much in common. As a result of, the, of this conquest, there are about 700 borrowings from Scandinavian into English. There are some uh, 800 words borrowed from German into English. Some of them have classical roots. For example, geographical terms, cobalt, uh, bismuth, zinc, quartz, and etc. There are also words denoting objects used in everyday life borrowed from German, iceberg, lobby, uh, rucksack, kindergarten, and etc. Besides the two main groups of borrowings, Romanic and Germanic, there are also borrowings from other languages. We shall speak about Russian borrowings, borrowings from languages belonging to Slavic languages. Russian borrowings. They were a constant contact between English and Russia, and they borrowed words from one language into the other. Among early English borrowings are mainly words connected with trade relations, rubble, kapek, vodka, uh, sable, and words relating to nature such as taiga, tundra, steep. There are also a large group of Russian borrowings from Russian literature of the 19th century. Uh, Narodnik, Muzik, Duma, Zemstva, uh, and etc. After the great uh, October Revolution, many words uh, were spread, were appeared in Russian connected with the new political system, new culture, and many of them were borrowed into English, such as uh, collectivism, Udarnik, uh, Kamsamol. Russian borrowings. Uh, uh, is the group connected with perestroika, uh, glasnost, nomenklatura, and, and others. To conclude this lecture, we should say that English continues to take in foreign words, but now the quantity of borrowings is not so abundant. Even more, English now has become a giving language, as it's as it has become lingua franca of the 20th century. Language borrowing not only enriches the vocabulary stock of the borrowing language and makes up for a lexical gap, gap but also helps people of different no nations to better understanding each other, especially about their cultures. So, the history of English can be called not only the history of language borrowings, but as a reflection and result of language and cultural contexts.